In this video, I'd like to go over another problem where we are doing a basic dose conversion. We are given the order for furosemide. Not sure if I'm saying that right. That's not the most important part. We need to give two milligrams IV stat. We need to determine how many milliliters to administer. We are given the label right here to the right. As always, I'm going to solve this multiple ways. You're welcome to click on the nursing formula to jump right to that, dimensional analysis to jump right to that, and click on proportion. So these have a button. If you click on those words, they will take you to the method um, solved particular, that particular way. I'm going to take one minute here, since this is the first dose conversion, to give you some brief information about this problem and what I would recommend that you do when you're given a problem similar to this. If you recall, a few videos ago, we did a basic conversion, a simple unit conversion from ounces to milliliters. What we realized was from ounces to milliliters, that was a conversion that we needed to memorize. That was something that we jumped to our formula sheet and our doses to memorize paper, and we saw that each ounce was 30 milliliters. Here we need to convert milligrams to milliliters. So I need to figure out two milligrams is going to be equivalent to some amount of milliliters. If you look at your conversions to memorize formula, there is no conversion from milligram to milliliters. The reason why, this is a measure of weight, this is a measure of volume. Therefore, how can we get from milligrams to milliliters? Well, that information is going to be given to you. That's going to depend on the concentration of your medication. If we look at the label here to the right, here I see 4 milliliters, I see 40 milligrams. This is the information that I want. I am told that 10 milligrams are contained within 1 milliliter. Regardless of which method you use, the nursing formula, dimensional analysis, or proportion, you must have this information. The concentration must be used. I'm now going to solve this using the nursing formula. The nursing formula is desired over half times quantity. Since this is the first time I'm using this formula, I'm going to take a second here to explain what this means. If this is the desired amount that we want to give in our order, so our desired amount here is 2 milligrams. What we have available, what amount of milligrams do we have available? We have 10 milligrams available and the quantity that it's contained in. And it's contained within one, see there's no number there, one milliliter. If this was something like 25 milligrams per tablet, this would be one. The idea here is we're taking what the order is, what we would like to give, divided by what's available, and then multiplying by what that medication is available in. It's available 10 milligrams per one milliliter. Notice this is the same thing as multiplying almost if we had a denominator of 1. So we will have 2 divided by 10 times 1. We notice milligrams will cancel. And what we're going to get is we're going to get 0 0.2 milliliters. We have to have that leading 0 there to represent. This, this is a number smaller than 1. We want to make sure we have that leading 0. And since this is a milliliter dose, less than one, we would write round to the hundredths, but this is a terminating decimal after the tenths place, so we don't need that. This is how we would solve this problem using the nursing formula. This should make sense. For every 10 milligrams that we have, we need to give the, or that we need to administer, we need to give the patient one milliliter. It should be obvious that this is going to be less than one milliliter. If we gave the patient one milliliter, then they would be receiving 10 milligrams, which is way too much. So even just starting the problem by looking at that and saying, well, I know it needs to be less than one milliliter, you can prevent potential errors. I'm now going to solve this problem using dimensional analysis. I still have this two milligrams to milliliters because we are converting a dose from milligrams to milliliters, and I still have my concentration labeled because that's what's necessary. What I'm going to do now is start the process of dimensional analysis. Remember when we were using dimensional analysis to convert a dose, we're going to start with what's ordered. We're going to convert what's ordered into a new unit. So what is ordered is 2 milligrams. The problem is what I'm actually going to administer is milliliters. So when I am done here at the end of my dimensional analysis, I better have milliliters. Well, 
I know using dimensional analysis I'm going to be multiplying by conversion factors. In order to cancel out milligrams, I know milligrams needs to be in the denominator. And do I know a conversion between milligrams directly to milliliters? I do. That's the concentration. So with dimensional analysis, I'm going to cancel out milligrams, so that needs to be on the opposite side of the conversion factor that we're multiplying by. And I'm going from milligrams to milliliters. Now that I have my units, 10 milligrams are contained within one milliliter. If I were to multiply, I would have milligrams cancel, I would have milliliters, this is what I want. So I'll have 2 times 1 is 2, my unit is milliliters, 1 times 10 is 10, and there's no unit. So if I divide this, I get 0 0.2 milliliters. If this went a little fast, you're welcome to go back to our YouTube channel, and there are previous problems on this practice word bank where I go over dimensional analysis a little bit more in depth. What I would bring your attention to is to notice that what we just did here, 2 times 1 divided by 10, is the exact multiplication and division steps that we used with the nursing formula. That is not by accident. Nursing, the nursing formula is derived from dimensional analysis. I am now going to solve this problem using a proportion. Again, we are still converting 2 milligrams to milliliters. I'm still going to be using this concentration. In fact, this concentration, 10 milligrams to milliliters, is what I can start with when I'm solving a dose problem using a proportion. The reason I know that is because regardless of what sort of information I plug over here into this ratio, it needs to have this ratio of 10 milligrams to 1 milliliters. So the numbers of milligrams to milliliters that are part of the solution to this problem are going to have this same ratio, 10 to 1. The question is, what am I looking for? Am I looking for milligrams or am I looking for milliliters? I am looking for the amount of milliliters, so that's going to have an X. The number of milligrams that I'm giving is 2. What we can think about this is, the ratio of what's ordered is going to be equivalent to the ratio of the concentration. And this is just if it's a one-step one problem. 10 milligrams to 1 milliliters, I need to give 2 how many milliliters is that. If you cross-multiply, We'll get 10x equal to 2. x will be, when we divide by 10 by both sides, we'll get 0 0.2. And then remember, x equal to 0 0.2. We don't want to leave our answer like that. It should be 0 0.2. And then remember your unit for milliliters. In summary, with proportion, our concentration, the ratio of our concentration, is going to be equivalent to another ratio. That's going to be the ratio of our order. Well. 10 milligrams for every milliliter is going to be equivalent to 2 milligrams for a certain amount of milliliters. That's what I'm looking for. This is different than dimensional analysis because I need to cross multiply to solve.